Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another screencast lecture. Tonight's topic is energy transfer in the atmosphere, and specifically, we're going to be talking about conduction tonight. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, you probably know that the sun provides most of Earth's energy, and you do get a little bit of energy from other stars and such, but the vast, vast majority of the Earth's energy comes from our sun. And what happens to that energy that comes to us from the sun? Well, there's various things will happen. One of the things that does happen to it is that some of that energy gets reflected back into space. That's one of the reasons why if you're floating around on the moon, you can actually see the earth because some of the light is going to be reflected off the earth and bounce back to the moon so you can see it. Same reason why we can see the moon. What features on Earth would reflect solar energy? So think 6% of that is going to be reflected back by our atmospheric gases. 25% can be reflected by clouds. Makes sense. 4% reflected off the Earth's surface. Sunlight comes down, boing, it can bounce back into space. So 35% of the total amount of solar energy that the Earth receives is bounced back into space. So we got 65% left that's not reflected back into space, what happens to that 65%? Well, let's find out. 15% is absorbed by the atmosphere. So you have particles of air, gas particles in the atmosphere. They can uh, be hit by energy, solar radiation, and they can start moving a little bit faster. They can increase in thermal energy. That's one thing that can happen to them. 50% of it is going to be absorbed by the Earth's surface, including the oceans. Uh, the land is going to maintain some heat energy. It's going to keep it. And here you see kind of a uh, chart showing all of these things put together. Well, now that there's energy on the Earth, we got that energy from the sun. How is that energy transferred from place to place in our atmosphere? Heat is transferred through the atmosphere in three different ways. And conveniently, we have a new song out about heat transfer, so check that out. We'll talk about that later. Our first of our three ways is ta -da -da, conduction. So conduction is our first way, and conduction is defined as the transfer of energy when molecules bump into each other. So this is touching. Conduction is when molecules can actually touch each other, or if you happen to grab a hold of this hot pot pan you're gonna burn your hand because you're touching you're coming into contact with this hot pot conduction requires a medium what that means is a medium is a substance through which energy can be transferred over a distance and there's all different kinds of mediums like for example a, a slinky can transfer energy through the slinky so if you take one end of the slinky and you snap it the slinky wave goes back and forth Here's the flame. The flame is heating up this metal bar. The metal bar, the molecules in the metal bar start moving faster and faster and faster, and it keeps moving down to your hand. Conduction. The way this is going to work is that you're going to see that net energy is going to be transferred from the warmer object or the object of higher temperature to the object that is less warm or the object that is of lower temperature. I really try to avoid the, using the words hot and cold. However, you could say, think that the hotter, the, the higher temperature, the hot object is going to give more total net energy to the cold object. Consider holding a piece of ice in your hand. Well, this isn't a piece of ice, but if you take a piece of ice, you put it in your hand, what's going to happen is your hand is at a higher temperature than the ice cube. Let's say the ice cube is uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Your hand is 99 degrees Fahrenheit more thermal energy is going to go into the ice cube than the ice cube is going to give to your hand. Since net energy flows from the warmer to the less warm object, energy will leave your hand into the ice cube and make your hand temperature decrease. Therefore, your hand is going to feel colder. It's losing some of its thermal energy. Does your hand continue to lose energy to the ice cube until your hand has no energy left? Is it going to keep leaving your hand and leaving your hand and leaving your hand? No, of course not. So when will your hand 
stop losing energy to the ice cube. So your hand is going to lose energy and give thermal energy to the ice cube. The your what's going to happen is that that process is going to pretty much stop into in when you get to uh, both objects having the same temperature. So when the ice cube is the same temperature as your hand, you will stop losing energy. So you might have seen like the movie Titanic, uh, where what was his name Jack? I think Jack fell into the very very cold North Atlantic, and here he is with Rose, I believe, and uh, you know they're that's a Titanic. It sank. All right, sorry, spoiler alert. All right. And he was getting very, very cold because his body is literally trying to heat up the entire ocean. That's not going to work out too well. So he is going to uh, suffer from a very severe body temperature lowering, and you'd call that hypothermia. Do all metals conduct heat at the same rate? You should remember this from sixth grade, that some materials will conduct heat energy better than others. Uh, some materials don't conduct heat very well at all. You can call those insulators. Like, so for example, styrofoam cup is really good for hot coffee because it doesn't let the hot coffee uh, thermal energy through the cup very well. Doesn't work real well. So when you touch the styrofoam cup, it doesn't really hurt. So there you go. Um, a metal cup like this, a steel cup, you really don't want to put hot coffee in and then try to grab it with your hand, it's going to be very, very hot all the way around very, very quickly because the metal conducts the heat very, very well. Boy, this is an amazing drawing, isn't it? All right, moving on. All right, well, that's the end of this first part. This is conduction. So remember, the big thing to know about conduction is that conduction requires a medium. It requires direct contact. Molecules bump into each other. Uh, some substances will conduct thermal energy better than others. Like, for example, metal does a lot better than wood or plastic or styrofoam. All right, we'll catch you next time. Check out energy transfers in the atmosphere convection. See ya.